I want to introduce to all of you our next speaker. Her name is Meredith Perry. She is 25 years old, and she imagined something and made it possible. She imagined being able to charge a room filled with electronic devices without ever touching them. And as a result, she founded UBeam, which is a transmitter that can recharge wireless devices using ultrasonic waves. And it's so nice to have you here with us. Thank you. And we were talking before, and she said to me, I'm not an engineer, and no one thought this was possible. Yes. So what did you do? How did you make it possible? Um, well, I just asked uh, a number of questions and Googled incessantly until I could figure out a way to wirelessly transmit through the air. So thank you, Google, for making <laughs> you beam possible. Um, yeah, um, basically what happened was is I was standing in my room when I was at, a senior at Penn um, holding my 15-foot-long laptop charger thinking, how archaic is this? You know, it's, it's 2011, we're using wireless devices and I'm tethered to the wall, literally chained to the wall with this, this wire to charge it. And so I just started asking myself, okay, you know, well, how can we beam energy through the air? And I started thinking about things that I, I knew that beamed energy through the air. So I started very simply like thinking about the remote control. And so I thought, okay, well, how does a remote control talk to a, a TV? I knew absolutely nothing. And um, and so I wondered, well, can I amplify the power of, of the of the remote control beam to actually charge a device? And and uh, um, that's not a good solution. So I went through the entire electromagnetic spectrum, and um, I was like, okay, well, there are all these different things that we could beam. We can beam everything from radio waves to gamma waves. Um, but I soon realized that everything on the right half of the spectrum was too dangerous to beam. You know, you wouldn't want X-rays whizzing through your body just to be able to charge your phone. And uh, Everything on the left half of the spectrum, closer to radio waves, are either uh, limited by the government or, um, or too inefficient. So, um, you know, I did a little research on what other people were doing to um, wirelessly charge devices using things like induction. So if you're familiar with, uh, you know, how you charge your electric toothbrush or something called the power mat, um, you place a device on a mat. And that wasn't good enough. You know, it was like, okay, well, wh why can't we move past that, you know, sort of, Zero, zero distance to one foot space where it seemed like th that's where the wireless power um, uh, technologies were, were going. And so I started looking into um, harnessing, uh, or harnessing ambient energy and I found uh, a device called a piezoelectric transducer which converts physical vibration or physical impact into electricity. Um, so for example, you could put it underneath a train. As the train goes by, you could harness the impact of that uh, of that train moving by and collect some of that energy. So I thought to myself, well, if we can do this with physical impact, how can we figure out a way to induce vibration or impact through the air with something invisible? And so it occurred to me that sound does that. Sound travels through the air by vibrating air particles, and we could potentially use the same uh, energy harvesting material to capture the vibration of sound as we do with physical impact. And so I decided to use ultrasound because you can't hear it. And, um, and so the, the concept was, was born. And how did you take it from there? <laughs> it was that simple. How did you take it from that idea and make it into something, which by the way, she does have a prototype and we will be doing a demonstration at the not, end. Not of a this. demo, not a demo. Okay. But well, you'll be seeing it. Yeah. At the very least, you'll be seeing it, but we'll have you turn off your cameras for that part. But how did you bring it from that to the prototype? Uh, where we are today? Yes. Um, well, uh, I did tons and tons and tons of research. And um, like you mentioned before, uh, everybody thought it was impossible. To my physics professors at Penn, um, to my product design professor at Penn, who told me you shouldn't. You shouldn't do this uh, to some of the top ultrasonic researchers in the world, to some of the top, um, you know, Time 100 uh, thinkers. Everybody told me there's no possible way that this can be done. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. And, um, <laughs> and so here I am two years later with a working prototype. And uh, we can, I mean, we can power devices um, at, a, at a rate faster than a wire. Um, over distances greater than any other wireless power system that's ever been created. Um, and it's, it's, uh, it's real. And so that, that really taught me a lot about, um, about uh, trusting expertise and understanding that 
Um, you know, expertise is a narrow way of looking at things, and um, sometimes being naive actually can be quite helpful in um, coming up with new innovative ideas. Um, so anyway, so um, basically, I uh, I contacted you know um, the top ultrasonic engineers and. You know, even though they told me that, you know, this couldn't be done, I stopped telling people what I was trying to do, and I just said, okay, make this part for me. And, you know, make, make this device, or these are the parameters for this, and these are parameters for that, and then we put it all together, and then, and then it works. Um, so, um, <laughs> it wasn't that simple. We, you know, there were, there were I, you know, I, I ultimately got um, a couple incredible engineers who, um, who believed in the, in the vision and in the math, and, um, and are now, uh, you know, my key technical executive team and um, you know we've been through hell over the past uh, two years trying to get this to work but it was just actually three months ago that we um, completed our first functional working prototype um, what's been the scariest moment along the way so far um, the scariest moment uh, the moments when I you know when I I just doubted myself thinking that maybe these you know maybe all these really smart PhD dudes are right and um, and I have absolutely no idea what I'm talking about, and I'm going to fall flat on my face, and everyone's going to watch me. So, what uh, kept you going? Um, knowing that the math was right, knowing that I, I knew that this was possible. So, you know, in my mind, this was just extraordinarily difficult. But if something is difficult, that doesn't mean it's impossible. And so, if it's not impossible, then you have to do it. And I knew that I was the only one who who would do it because uh, everyone else was not going to. And um, and so uh, I just had to keep pushing because I knew that the idea could be so big that if I could just get it to work, um, uh, then, you know, everything would change. So, yeah, just knowing that uh, it could potentially be done. Where does it go from here? Where do you take it? So from here, um, we, uh, so we have our, our, our functional prototype, and now we're turning it from, um, you know, something that looks kind of like a bomb slash spaceship into a... Uh, into a real product that will go into people's hands uh, within the next two years.